I'm just another love to hold you over, baby. Find someone else to do it for you. Oh, find someone else to do it for you. Yo, what's going on fam? It's been a while since I've done one of these. And really, if I'm honest, it's because of what this video is about. I've been overthinking this whole thing. My YouTube content, my music, all that stuff. And if you are like me, constantly holding back art, constantly finding yourself in ruts, then this video is for you. This is also just a great excuse to finally start uploading videos in 4K. I finally got a new M1 laptop that can actually handle HEVC, high quality 10-bit 4K video. If you're watching this on a laptop or a TV, let me know if you can notice the difference between this video and other videos that I've had in this set. About a year ago, I started putting out covers on my YouTube and Instagram. I had no idea that these covers would take off in the way that they did. Millions and millions of views on YouTube, millions of views on Instagram, viral on TikTok. I had artists like Drake, Nicki Jam, Kelly Rowe, Roland, Jesse J reposting my stuff. It's been really dope that people have really been just resonating with my voice. I found a new texture in my voice somehow, just trying new stuff. Yeah, just sleeping. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Stay woke. I used to be very insecure about my voice. I didn't think it was that unique. I didn't think it was that strong. But now I'm like, yo, people like stripped back stuff. Try me, I deserted. No time to have you lurking. So let's let's reapproach this music. The attention that I got for the covers was great in that sense, but I took it too far. When I started approaching my music again, all the people that would listen to this, now I got this new audience and what are they gonna think about it? What are some of these celebrities gonna think about it? These label execs that I have attention from now, A&Rs and all that, what are they gonna think about my own original music? Will it stand up to the covers I've been doing? And so when I was creating this, this new song that I just put out called No Fool, and this song is streaming everywhere, Spotify, Apple Music, wherever you listen to music. Sun up, now I'm having coffee, eggs, and regret. Am I the only one in your bed? You just wanna have fun. And I'm excited about it because this is my first step out into the world in a year as, as my original music, aside from the covers that I've been doing. The way that I created it, who I created it with, just felt free. In the moment, it felt great. And it was like, does this feel good? It's like, yeah, this feels good, man. I like this. I didn't overthink it. I'm going to try to listen to my own advice from this, and I hope that this helps you too. I've been thinking about myself in multiple entities. For simplicity of this video, I'm just going to assume that myself is at least two selves. They have complementing and competing desires. And on one side, you have like the rational self, right? The, the one who sees the bigger picture for your life, sees a vision that sees things in a very rational way. Is this good for our health? Is this good for our long-term future? Will this make us money? Will people like this? How many followers can you get from this? Is this a wise decision to make? But for creatives, and I believe that all people are creatives, whether you realize it or not, I think that there is a creative bone in every person and sometimes it's more realized than other people. The creative self, the irrational self, the abstract self tends to be more concerned with questions like, how does this make me feel? Do these colors look good together? What emotion does this evoke? It tends to be more concerned with not the larger picture, but kind of what's in front of it, like right now. What is right for right now? These two selves make up one whole individual, but oftentimes inside of us, they can fight like cat and dog or like management and employees. And I think that's an interesting analogy to make because oftentimes as we get older and we are faced with more practical problems in our life that we didn't really notice when we were kids. Yo, how am I gonna pay my bills? How can I merge into society? How do I find my tribe of people that I connect with? And I've gotta be very concerned about practical things for the benefit of myself and for the benefit of the people that rely on me. The rational self tends to be promoted to like COO, chief of operations of this whole thing. The creative self kind of becomes an employee that listens to all the decisions that management makes. The rational self is great. It can protect us from being hurt by people, like in relationships, if we're only like emotional and only abstract and only about what concern in the moment. Real practical concerns are not addressed when the, the creative self, the abstract, the irrational self is really just concerned with things like, does this feel good? Concerned about sounds and, and colors and aesthetics and 
and vibes. And the rational self is concerned with these things too, but only as like a means to an end, only when these things are socially or physically or financially profitable. Oftentimes we allow our rational self to become the superior. But if we give our rational self too much control, then the creative self tends to be weighed down with management decisions, things that the creative self really isn't equipped for. It doesn't want to be concerned with that. And eventually the creative self might go on strike. It's just like, yo, if you, if you know all the best decisions and rational self, you be the creative. And then we start finding ourselves in creative ruts. If I'm working on a song, and there's always this voice in my head saying, yeah, but does that sound like such and such? Do you think this is gonna go well? Or maybe you should do this because people will like this more. And the creative self gets, gets insecure and, and then you just have this rational mind trying to do stuff and there's no freedom in it. But the best art is made when you're creating it for the creative self, where the creative self creates for the sake of creating because that's what it does. That's what you do is you create and, it, and you do it simply because it feels good. And then hopefully there are other irrational selves out there, other creative selves out there that connect with that. Through the internet, you're able to connect theoretically, possibly to billions of people. And with billions of differences in taste, you'll find people that really enjoy your stuff, but you've gotta be putting it out. In this content driven world, we as creatives have to find the balance between publishing and good art. By good art, I mean high quality art that also feels good to ourselves. And by publishing, I don't mean that in a very specific industry term, but in a very general broad sense, putting it out. When you upload a video to YouTube or upload something to Instagram, that is publishing work. You have made it public for people to consume, but you've got to be doing it frequently. You can't spend so much time overthinking this thing of whether or not people are going to like it to the point that you don't put out a lot of stuff in hoping that that one thing you put out, you've put so much effort and so much hope into one thing to pop off that you really diminish your chances of other things popping off. You've got to increase your chances the more stuff you put out. And you want that creative self to thrive because it is a part of you. It's who you are. You don't want a part of yourself to go on strike or to dwindle away. Having a healthy and free creative self is very much tied to being fully a healthy and free creative person as a whole for your mental health, for your own spiritual and emotional health to create art for yourself.